have to be an area to be on a team. Bring your friends. If they need to meet us, I mean, what? And who doesn't like to wear a cape, right? Right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I mean, I don't have a half a special occasion to wear a cape, but I'm all about that. So, okay, guys, um, without further ado, I'm going to bring our special guest up here because we want him up here as long as humanly possible because I've worked so hard to get up here. <laughs> He's a pretty busy guy, so you have to be the squeaky wheel, and trust me, he's probably never heard a squeakier wheel than Raylan Libby. He's probably like, oh my God, i got to go to this girl to shut up. Um, but I wasn't willing to stop asking um, for you guys, because I know how incredible he is, um, and you know, he, he's so humble, but he is incredible, and he's incredible because he's just a normal guy with an awesome family that really wants to provide awesome things for his family. And he wants to show his kids that average is not okay. And I love that. I just love that about him. And so, um, you know, Mike and I have been fortunate enough to, to get close to Dale and Vanessa, and they're just, you know, two of the best people ever. You're going to see that. But he's... Um, He's, he's an incredible trainer. You're going to see that. Um, so make sure you got your pen handy. And Hi, Nancy. Well, hi. I didn't see you come in. How are you? It's nice to see you. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I, saw it. I thought I saw everyone. Okay, guys, so put your hands together loud and proud for Mr. Dale Lundgren.
the biggest mistake most people make is that there are people in this room that are champions that can do it, but they can't bring anybody along with them. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I want to show you how to do the cake. Um, me and my wife, we never do anything unless to do the cake. Right? And if, I'm going to really share, I'm going to share five things with you guys that if you did these five things, you will be at the top of our company. Consistently. You're doing consistent. Now look, my background is not the greatest, but I'm, I do well. And it's because of the work ethic. And that's all it is. Right? And so I'm going to show you guys that if you're willing to do these things, I can promise you your business will grow. I can promise your business will grow. I mean, um, I'm working with a girl on my team, Sarah. She grew by 18,000 months last, last month. From these little things. These five things. They're only focused on five things. Like if, if I were, if we're in a big setting. You guys want to see something really funny? Watch this. Okay. And I'm not going to tell you what I'm trying to get out of this, but. So what's our system? Somebody tell me. Shut it up. Two a day. What else? You get my point? Why is everybody not saying the same thing? That's definitely part of the system. But everything you guys said was what? Is in the 10 core commitments, right? And in the 10 core commitments, there are things in the 10 core commitments that we, we would choose to do rather than, am I right? So when you look at, yeah, I'll get a workout partner. I'll be here a year from now. I'll come to a regional, but are you really doing two a day? <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? It's the things they mentioned in court commitments that will actually show you. So it really, what I'm going to share with you is, will help that wheel move for you constantly, right? And so where people, I think we, as humans, we, we try to take the easiest way out. Does that make sense? We all do, including Dale Longer, okay? And so I'm going to share with you guys what I do, and I do on a daily basis, and I continue to do it. I've gotten 16 recruits in the last five months. So what I'm doing is working, but it's, all it is is more activity. <laughs> Truthfully, that's all it is. Does that make sense? And I'm going to share with you guys what, what works, and all it is is activity. I'm here to tell you that there's not a person in this room that can't do this. There's not a person in this room that can't go to the top of our company. If you really, really do these things, then I'm going to share with you. So, It'll take some time, I promise you, so I'll get through them. I promise you everything I'm going to talk about is in the slideshow. Is that cool? But I will get through them. I think there's some things that are very important. Like, first of all, your why is very important. That's, that's a must, right? And I'm going to show you how to use your why to help you drive it. But I'm also going to show you how you use your why to build your business. Most people don't build their business with a why. You, you have a why, but you don't use your why to build your business, is what I'm trying to say. That's a big one. Okay? A lot of people come in here and they build a business based on what you're doing. And so, when you tell people what you're doing, do you guys get anybody that's ever skeptical? Always. Am I right? Can you imagine that you wouldn't get, if you share somebody why you're doing this, it'd be kind of weird if they're skeptical. Does that make sense? And so what I mean by that is, if when I first shared this business with my friends, I just told them, look, you know my son's being diagnosed with di type 1 diabetes, you know my business is gone because I'm in real estate. And you know I'm going through hell and I found a way to get out of the hell that I'm living and come to my house. How did they say no to that? Did they talk to them about hearing? No. And if somebody says no, you know what I say? I say, great, I expected you to say no and not everybody's going to be able to come. Right? It's the last minute notice. When can I sit down with you? Automatic yes. Does that make sense? So what happens is in the very beginning, you take a brand new person, right? You call someone, you get excited about what you're doing. You're super excited. You're jacked. You tell them everything about the company, including like when you see the old man there and it comes from the soil, you're like, oh, you know, the doctor, and you know, it's my, my dad, and you know, I mean, all this great stuff is really not true, right? Uh, but you just say these things because your nerves are taken over. Does that make sense? And you're excited about the business. And so there's things that I'm going to share with you guys what to do with it, how to do this business, how to take a brand new person to director. 
How to take a brand new person to the director. How to take a brand new person to the director. How to take a brand new person to the director. That's really the business, you guys. You realize that three directors is, is the call. And you realize that nine for directors is the executive, the executive director. You guys get that? So it doesn't take much, does it? But when you look at the overall, overall picture and you go, oh my gosh, 37,000 more is the executive director. Or nine directors, which one's easier? See the, see the difference? It's, it's how you look at the business. It's how you look at it. It's how you perceive it. It's what will shut your, your brain down, right? For me, I, I don't ever I look at it, how many people I can help. That's why I, don't, I never looked at the end number. I'll, I'll tell you, Mark Smith sat in his hot tub and he says, you know, I'll probably hit NMD in a year. I mean, I was laughing, like, whatever, right? But he just didn't know that he, you know, he didn't think he'd think it would take him that long to get 150,000 volume. Mentally, he, looked, he was, even Mark Smith was looking at the number going, I think it's going to take me a year. Does that make sense? And it took him a month. Okay? But my point is, my point is that when you look at those things, that's what happens inside of our brain's mental game. It's a big deal. It's a huge deal. I mean, let's just think about this. When I very first got started, Someone was diagnosed with type 1, didn't have insurance, my car was repo, emptied my kids' rooms, put my friends in the rooms to, to rent the rooms, so we'd stay in the house we're living in. Basically, I was going for help. Can you imagine that if I lived in that and soaked in that, where would I be? I wouldn't have gone to the top, whatever. Can you imagine? I mean, if I just thought about that every single day, would I have recruited anyone? No, right? And so we are so good as humans to... What we're so good at is focusing on our past, aren't we? And can you control it? So why do we do that? Isn't that true? Isn't that true for real? But we focus on our past so much, don't we? I mean, I can go way back for you guys. I mean, my dad died when I was, when I was 12, my mom died when I was 19. Can you imagine if I just focused on my gosh when they died when they died? I probably would die when they died. Does that make sense? The truth is, is um, I don't know, but I'm going to focus on that. Does that make sense? And so really, when you, when you, when you uh, Mark used to be on stage, and, and I know Mark, so when I say these things about Mark, I don't mean to be like, look at him any different, but he would be on stage, and he's like, what you focus on girls, and I'd be thinking, and I'd be sitting in your chair going, she felt me that real, she felt me that real. Well, I'm focusing on making six figures, and I'm not. Right? 
in my business, I recruited a couple, Dave and Jay Lynn, and I recruited them, and they actually were living in the back of their truck, which no one even knew at the time. And they were going around, and they were just talking their heads off, and they were struggling and struggling, and finally they were like listening, and they started doing the business right. I'm like, guys, let's just do a party. And let's do some sit down. And let's just get people to try the fraud. So we did this sit down for this kid, he's 19 years old. And guess what? He signed up. It's weird. And then guess what? We did it. We scheduled 10 sit downs for him, we booked two parties for him, and we, we, we got at least 25 people on the list to try the product out. Okay? So the first party off, of course, mom shows up, mom's boyfriend shows up, and some of his friends. Well, guess what? Naturally, mom signed up, bless you, bless you, right? <laughs> Signs up, naturally. Guess what? Boyfriend's trying the product. Two weeks later, guy comes in, looks at his face, he goes, what are you doing? Something's different. And he's like, well, you know they have this thing on Tuesday night. Let's go. Let's go check it out. He comes, signs up. Then I do a game plan with him. Same thing, sit down, product. One of the people we get the product to is on again. And for those of you guys that don't know who on camp is, she makes a million dollars a year in Nearing International. Okay? So you never know who's going to show up in your life, but it came from doing sit downs, from someone trying the product, from somebody coming to a market party. You guys get my point? The little things. These little things. And that, here, you guys ready for this? You guys really ready for this one? So that 19 year old kid quit. And he goes, so you're telling me 
that where I sit today is where you sat 15, 20 years ago? And he goes, well, <laughs> yeah. That's the thing you know, I say. He goes, you're sitting, and he goes, you're telling me I'm sitting with a company before they open up the world. Kind of like where you were before you guys earned millions. Does that not freaking get you off, like feeling amazing? In that conversation, the CEO said, when we first started, we had this, everyone had to run. And they had this run, and we went from a $30,000, $30,000 person convention down to 6000 to now multiple conventions. Isn't it crazy how this, how this works? How business works? Right? And so what you're looking at is you're looking at Nirin before we open the world. And you're looking at Nirin right now that is a legacy company. The one thing that you have to understand about this company is that that no company, zero companies in this industry do. Okay? Even Amway doesn't have a corporate building in every country. Okay? And in Amway, you don't, you have to build a separate business in every country. So I, my Japan team wouldn't count for my business. Does that make sense? Isn't that crazy? It's not a global seamless business which is what we have, right? So when you look at what we have, where you don't lose your organization if you don't produce, and you don't, you don't, you don't go to national marketing director, and look, in New Skin, once you get to like a national marketing director position, you have to pay 2,500 bucks on an auto ship, or $2,500 in customer. You guys get my point? So Jeff doesn't believe in this whole inventory load they don't, he doesn't believe it unless it's 3% of our brand partners buy product. You guys get that? That's 3% of your purchase inventory. The, no, no, they get product, yeah. They have to get product, right? Or they get the product for free. That number is through the roof, too, right? So, but my, my whole point is that when you really look at where we sit in the industry, what this company has, Imagine what this looks like as we go global, right? Some of you guys may say, well, I don't know somebody in China, or I don't know somebody in Europe, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it doesn't matter because you just can ask someone. Does that make sense? You, 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 you would be shocked to see, well, who do you know that's, a, that's Japanese? Who do you know that's Korean? Who do you know that's, you know, next thing you know, you got a team growing in Korea and Japan. And almost at it. So I gotta get away from the international thing because I'll get in trouble, right? It's really easy. Just look on Facebook, guys. It's really simple. You already know where the countries are. Just look on Facebook. People are blowing it every day. Just not gonna come for me. <laughs> at the three star and above trip, they said if you leak anything, you won't be welcome back at the next three star trip. Now, I'm going that trip, so <laughs> for me. <laughs> When, when, you, when, I, when, I look, when I look at when I look at Nirin, I, I, I get more excited. The opportunities have gotten even bigger for us. Got even better. Right? And where we sit with where the product is. I mean, gosh, isn't it amazing that we come up with a product that actually works? You know, when you come out with a, a vitamin, you actually feel something. Yeah. I mean, do you guys like the use factor? Yeah. yeah I mean, it's crazy. You feel good. I don't know how to explain it, but I, I feel better, right? And I, and, I, and I don't, I take fish oils and I don't feel like I just don't eat anything for me. Does that make sense? But I'm just not used to taking the vitamin. I would expect maybe something over time. Does that make sense? But our product is just that good. We don't come up with anything that's not. Right, and being in the wellness, you have to take advantage of the wellness. In, in my opinion, here's my honest opinion, can I, can I be honest with you guys today? If I were you guys, and I'm just gonna give you guys my examples, I would never tell you guys to do something without me doing it myself. Does that make sense? So last month, a lot of us purchased product, didn't we? Right, and a lot of us used that product. My, my biggest tip to you guys would be, if 
if you're building a business, go buy as much of that product as you can afford and get it in people's hands. Right? I love playing golf. I was at a, a, a golf tournament in the beginning of, of the month, and I gave away five samples of the powder to six of my buddies. And every one of them have reordered. Because guess what? You can feel the difference, can't you? And they loved it. they loved the way they felt during playing golf. Because you get energy. Right? And you can actually sample this product. Does that make sense? What could you do? To build, you, we're in this business to build a business. Does that make sense? So I, I go out and I, I, some of you guys have free inventory right now. I would be buying as much of that stuff with the free inventory as you possibly can. Does that make sense? But put your business to work. Right? And you remember, if, 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 I'll, I'll say this, look. There's two things, two things in this business. First of all, if this was your job, and you had to do 10 sit-downs a month, and you had to do two parties a month, and you had to get 25 before and after pictures a month, what'd you do? Why? And if you did it, what happened? You're gone. Am I right? And would they pay you what you get paid here? Pretty weird, isn't it? But when it's your own business, you won't work as hard as you would for someone else. Isn't that the truth? Right? And it all comes down to one word. Believe. Am I right? And that word is so powerful. And it, it, you, 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 you can shut yourself down or you can make yourself almost feel like you're inhuman. You know, when you really understand the power, the power that you've been given and what you can do in this world, it's pretty amazing, guys. It's pretty amazing that I didn't focus on debt collectors. And I would cry in my garage for 30 minutes. I didn't want to face my kids because I was broke. Couldn't afford my nothing. It was food. Does that make sense? And I just said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have fun. And you guys would laugh. I mean, I think Danny is still the same. You know, we would be in a rose off party and people would think we're Tweedle Dean and Tweedle Dumps. <laughs> Danny Tweedle Dumps is here. He's out here, so he's Tweedle Dumps. Getting a little bit of But, but in, in a rose off party, my first rose off party um, that we did, it was, there, was, there was about 25 people there. That wasn't mine, it was somebody underneath me. And um, we were freaked out. Two guys, and I said about skincare. The video was just an eight minute video. <laughs> it doesn't say anything really about the business. <laughs> no joke, okay? And so we're in there, and then the video was done, and then it was just like an awkward silence. <laughs> and me, I hate awkward silences. I get so uncomfortable in awkward silences. So I'm like, see this bottle? I said, doesn't it look sexy? Right? And that's what happened too. Sorry that happened. I said, look, touch the bottle, touch it, put some product. If you want, put some product on it. And then from that point on, it was just chat, 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 people were signing up. Right? It wasn't extravagant. Does that make sense? We told our stories, which in the very beginning is that we were broke to the point of gallon milk. We weren't successful, but we're going to the top. And that's all it was. Me and both said, look, we're going to the top, we're going to the top. Everywhere we were, everyone who was around us, we're going to the top. Guess what? Because what you focus on, you guys get my point? Everywhere, I probably purged over thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of families. There, 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 there wasn't a living room that I didn't cry in for at least a year because I couldn't tell my story. Does that make sense? And so it really comes down to that, that, that belief, guys. It doesn't matter where you sit today. Because here's the thing. Here's some great news. You can't control what happened. And I can't control what's happened in my past. And I won't even look at my past. Because if you, if you look back, you can't go forward. Right? It's true. But when you do go forward, failure's not an option. And when failure's not an option, success is inevitable. And so here's what I would say. If we're going to go out there and we're going to work so hard for someone else, and I did this for 18 years with, with Opie Sunrise. Great company. I worked my way from the dungeons all the way to design. And I did well. I never made six figures. And honestly, I never made six figures with them. 
and 18 years. And I did my first year in the Iron Man National. Right? Because, why? In, in, the, in, in OP, do they show me how to make six figures? Do they want me to? No, they don't do that. They want to hire someone else that they can pay less and get rid of you. I'm going to tell you guys something about OP. Last year, they laid off a thousand people. And they're laying off 400 more and actually getting rid of the whole foothill, which is the home office. They're getting rid of it. So now, the Zara who bought Oakley is basically taking their own, basically that's what they all do, right? A big company buys, they're going to really, they already have a sales department. They already have an advertising department. They already have a sports department division. You guys get my point? So all my good friends have lost their jobs over 30 years, 35 years. Oh, they put it into this company. Isn't that crazy? Just to get laid off. 400 more of them getting laid off. And these are the designers. They, that is the saddest thing in the world. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, they're giving them a year's salary, but that's still not cool. You guys, you know, at least they got something. Wouldn't you agree? But that's where this world's going. If you, if you look at where this world's going, we're having driverless cars soon. <laughs> we kind of do it right now. You know, and, and you know, look at Amazon. They want to they do check, there's no checkers. You can just go in with a car and you can have your own groceries. They just bought Whole Foods. I would not be shocked if Whole Foods has no employees here really, really soon. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you, you, you don't want to tell me that, right? 13 billion? 16 billion. Somebody pays money. Yeah. The employees get any of that? They probably won't be there. Am I right? And so, you, you look at what one out of five people right now are joining in the network market. One out of five. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. One out of five is pretty big, guys. So when you understand this industry, you're 20% more likely to make six figures in this industry than you are in corporate. Because in this industry, it's someone to show you how to succeed. Big difference. Right? And here's what happens when most people won't quit. Then when you, you quit, you never win. I've never been that guy. I don't know how to quit. I'm that guy on the team that's 90 to 80, down by six. I still think we can win. Or it can be in basketball down by 15 in two minutes and still going to win. Couple threes can turn this game over. Does that make sense? I just don't know. I have too much drive to understand. I never, I don't like second place. Does that make sense? And so I will die getting there. And I'm cool with that. I would rather go all the way to the end with anything I do than quit. Now, but I will tell you that there have been many times that I've quit, and you're in, it's, only, it's only a minute later, and I'm back in the game. <laughs> I'll be honest. Okay. One, of the, one of the best examples would be a run for four-star national marketing director. I, the way I do it is I use my kids to drive me. My son, uh, I think I told a few of you guys the story. You know, um, I told Brayden it was the best birthday gift ever at Disney World, so we did the Disney World tickets, and of the hotel and the flights, and I said, if we don't go, Daddy, we're not going. But, you know, he cried, I cried before. And I said, well, you know, Daddy's never let me down. And I haven't. And every day he reminded me, we four star, we four star, we four star. Every, every day, every single day, he was reminding me, we four star. We were 19,000 away within uh, 24 hours from four star national. And we got to 6.30, we're about 9,000. I said, well, Vanessa, we're not making it. And she goes, yeah, I don't think we're going to make it. I said, bitch, don't bring me back to the game, dude. She was in love, right? No, but she felt that way, too. Like, I honestly felt that way, you know? But I had to bring myself, to be honest, right back in the game. I wasn't going to... I was looking at Brady and go, well, I can't say I quit. If I end this, I'm going to the end. Does that make sense? I'm not going to quit now. And so we, we were 8.30, an hour and a half away till the end of the month, and we we're at 4. And I'm like, babe, it's not happening. I can't get only one. She's like, we're going to do this. You know? And then 
just turned into V smoke. And I was like, we got this. And we went over to five that five five grand. So we hit over the plus over what we thought we would get by five thousand. Does that make sense? It's not it's all it's going to the end, and if you go to the end, you can be okay with it. It's what happens is, is that we set goals, all of us in this room, and we say right around this time we go, I'm not sure if I'm gonna hit my goal, so guess what? I'll do it. How's it working for you? That doesn't work, does it? You know why we do that? Because we don't want to let ourselves down, do we? But what if you went to the end? What if you took that extra 15 days, 14 days, 13 days, whatever it is that we have left, and you went to the end and you didn't hit your goal, but you got really close to it? What would happen next time? You would. You would go past it. And I'll give you a perfect example without saying her name. I have a friend of mine who recruited someone, recruited someone, recruited someone, who did a game plan. And this person is a top national market director on my team, but they're very rank driven. And I am not rank driven. I am growth driven. I'm a growth driven person. Meaning I would, a rank five star means nothing to any of you guys. And you guys don't care, but if it was you, you would. Does that make sense? And so when you, when you, when you, what happens is when you go for a rank and you don't hit it, it doesn't hurt that month. It may not hurt the next month. It may not hurt the next month or the fourth month. It starts irritating you. And you go, well, I maybe I can't do this. Maybe I'm not meant for this. Does that make sense? But what if you just focus on growth? This person did 5,300 volume in their first month. Hit the record. Awesome. So she's going to go senior director, of course, right? And my friend's like, no, you got to go senior director. You got to go senior director. You got to go senior director. And I'm like, you, you, you're crazy. Don't promote that. She's going to call you crying when she doesn't get senior director. Right? Promote growth. Have her do exactly what she did this month. And she'll chance to show you. So she calls me up. She's like, yeah, I'm going. And I'm not going to take, take her ball away. Does that make sense? I said, look, in the end, it's just about growth, though. In the end, it's preparing to grow growth. She hit like 10,500. So she did what she did last month. But double. It's pretty awesome. Guess what? The two star MD calls me and says, she's crying, dude. Can you get it on the phone? I need you. I need some Dale Munger. Okay. And I'm like, I don't want to do this call for you because you, you deserve this call. <laughs> That's what I said, but I'll do this call for you. So I get on the call for her, and she's crying, and, and, I, and, I, and I said, I'm just going to be mean. I'm, just, I'm mean. Okay, so I said, do you realize you're crying on the phone right now? She said, yes. I go, I have no idea why. She says, I think it. I go, you double your business. You grew by 100%. And we're crying on this phone right now. She started laughing. <laughs> she goes, I didn't even look at it that way. It was the fact that I didn't get the car that I was so miserable. And I said, well, what if you did the same thing this month? What would happen? She goes, well, guess what? I'll get the car. 20000 long. Got the car. She's organic now. Does that make sense? She's doing these little things, but she's not focused on the end goal. If you're only focused on growth, what do you eventually hit? But you never look back, and you always go forward. And tell you it's not an option. Does that make sense? It's the growth, guys. So I would tell you guys, what if you had this mindset? I promise you I'll get to some of I, I need to get into these mindset things before I can go into really what this business is. How this is easy, this easy this business is. I know it's easy to do, but it's also easy not to do. I want you to know that. Um, when, when you, when you, when you, let's take five people. You got five people you're working with, okay? And you say, I want to help you grow by a thousand this month. Would an extra five thousand growth be nice in your business this month? Yeah. That's pretty awesome, right? And then, out of those 5,000 growth, you only got another five people, right? And now you got 10 people to work with, and all 10 of those people are working on doing 10 sit-downs this month. What would 100 sit-downs look like in your business at the end of the month? And those five people are going to do at least two parties, right? What would 10 new parties look like in your business this month? And what if each one of them, all 10 of them should be getting pictures, so what if they all got 20 pictures each? 
over 200 pictures of Bayit Yudim, 100 sit downs, and only 10 parties. But we started with five. Started with one. Started with three. Some of you guys have 10 in this room. If you just helped those 10 grow by 1,000, you think some of them would grow by more? Every time. But we're so focused on that rank, aren't we? And really, the truth is, the rank doesn't matter. It's not the rank, it's the growth. And when you focus on growth, it happens. Right? And so that's how Sarah went from... And here's the story. I was in NLA in Boston, and I, I asked someone, I go, somebody please be... I just felt like I had to say this. Someone in this room, please be vulnerable and tell me where you're at. She says, I'm stuck at 77,001. And I go, everybody in the room said, aww. Oh. <laughs> Nobody's really upset at you, Sarah. Me, it's not even 77,000. Probably. She goes, no, I'm yeah, serious. It's been about a year. You can't meet that 77,000. And I said, well, what are, you, what, what, what are we doing? She's like, we're doing it all. We're doing everything. We're, we're calling the team. We're telling them to do parties. And, and, and we're telling them to do sit downs. We're telling them to do all this stuff. And I go, that's the problem. I go, you're telling them to do sit downs. And you're telling them to do parties. I said, why don't we get on the phone? We got on the phone with Fiverr, senior directors, and I said, why don't you, uh, you guys each call your team. Some of them had five, some had 10, some had 15 people they're working with, and I want you to not get off the phone until you book 10 sit-downs with each one of them this month. And I want you to get off the phone until you book a list of people that, if they got five bottles, I want you to get 20 pictures this month. If you got three bottles, do the math, times four, right? Two bottles, 10 bottles, Times four. Does that make sense? And what if you did that with your current people on your team? What, what if ten, you guys get, if you did 10 sit downs, two parties, and 25 pictures, it's 22 hours of your life in 30 days. So are you really working this business that hard? It's only 22 hours of your life for something that could grow your business. We get, you guys get this point? Pretty cool, isn't it? It's, but we're not looking at it that way, right? Some will say, well, gosh, I gotta do sit downs, man. That's awesome. a lot of time. You know how many sit downs I do for my own house on Zoom? I did 36 personal sit downs last month. Personal sit downs. Right? And I recruited six of them. And 15 of them, at least of them, that are trying to get the money. Okay? That's pretty good numbers. Right? And then the rest says no. They're not interested. I would rather somebody tell me no than not to play phone tag. Right? So when you when you focus on these little things and you understand that the building this business is only, it's really it's five things. It's sit-downs, it's parties, it's before and after pictures. I won't say something. You know, when we first got started, our biggest problem was Everybody was, bless you, everybody was trying to borrow product from everybody. Did anyone remember that? Did you ever have to borrow product from people because you had no product available? Do you remember Jeff Olson saying, our biggest issue is we don't have any inventory because people are, it's out? You guys get my point? That's where, that's a problem you want to do. That you don't have enough product and you have to borrow the product from someone else. Right? That was a big problem. Okay, and, and a private conference call. These are uh, not utilized enough. And the private conference call is basically just talking about, telling your story, talking about the business, talking about why Miriam, where it's at, where we're going. Maybe two minutes on the business in the end. It's a 15 minute call probably. I do them in 12 to 15 minutes, typically, right? And then one that is very, very important that most people never do, and I would say it's probably the easiest to get all of your brand partners to do is a, what I call a private product Zoom. And so what I mean is I just do a product only Zoom to get people interested to become customers. And here's what happens with every person. I always have way more people on the product one than I would on the brand partner one. Because their confidence, does that make sense? For me, it was opposite. I can get way more people to just look at the business than I can the product. I am not a product. I am a product first person. I am not a customer first person. Does 
that make sense? You guys get that? Um, if you're a customer of mine, I am turning you into a grandmother. That is my mission. Right? Longest everyone's ever lasted is four months. As a customer, I'm not about you. I'm giving you every month I am on you. I have one right now. She's about to go on the five month area and she's frustrating me. But I'm going after her. Okay? She loves the product. Right? But I let her know. I mean, I'm, she's got, I think she has seven customers in LinkedIn. And I let her know. I'm like, look, that's seven people that you could be earning money on every month because they keep ordering. Right? And she's like, oh. And she's still not signed up. I'm going to get her. <laughs> okay. get it. I don't want to keep taking that money. Does that make sense? So, what, what if you did those five things? And what if you just focus on those five things? What would happen to your business? What if you worked with somebody in this business? What if you had somebody in your business that's brand new, and you sat down with them, which I'm going to do, I'm going I'm to I'm do that. I'm actually going to have someone come up here, and I'm going to work with her, and I'm going to help her build a list. I'm going to show her how to invite. Because that's important. Okay? And um, those are th- th- some key opponents that I'll do really help. And it's just important that you guys see it live. Does that make sense? When you work with somebody brand new, I take it so serious. That's 500 bucks that most people didn't have. That's a thousand bucks that most people didn't have. You know, whatever it is, they, they're not going to fail. They're not going to fail because of the honor. Does that make sense? And so that, that I take this so serious. And I treat, it is the reason why I succeed. I treat this like a million dollar business, and so it pays me like a million dollar business. If you spent a hundred grand on this business and you had a convention next month, and it was twenty thousand dollars, guess where you would be? Why? Because you spent a hundred grand on your business, right? If it was a big, if you had a McDonald's franchise, do they make the best hamburger in the world? You know, I was, I forget where I was when someone said that. <laughs> well, no, not so much. Their ice cream cones are pretty damn good. So. Um, yeah, but it mean, the reason they own the most real estate. McDonald's buys real estate. McDonald's has a uh, two or three story McDonald's in Hong Kong that the rent is 200 grand a month and it does not make that a month and they have it just for the brand. You guys get my point? They buy real estate. They, McDonald's are in the right places. Do you guys ever get that? Yeah, they're in the real estate business. They really are in the real estate business. But they have a system. A 16-year-old can run that business. When you, all of you in this room could point, where's the fry machine? If you close your eyes, where would you point? Where's the fry machine in McDonald's? It's on the left. You know that. Is the first one that puts it on the right would be the first McDonald's that has ever run a business. <laughs> Am I right? The Coke machine's on the right. Yes, it's always that way. It's never changed. We have a system here. It's five things. Sit down, parties, pictures, private comments, calls, and a Zoom, a part of Zoom. What would that do for your business? Imagine if you had five new customers for a brand new person. Are they excited? The product's free? Those five customers, can buy, potentially by the end of the month, can be brand partners too. Am I right? I had 40 people try the product my first month. I am, a, I am a product first person. I will tell you. I believe in that. I believe that I would rather approach someone with product versus all business because I will lose the majority of the people that are skeptical if I go all business. Does that make sense? There's 10% of my list that I did not talk about the product because they would laugh me out of the house or the room. Does that make sense? So I went business with them. But the rest of them are product. Right? And so you give someone the product, they like the product, guess what? They're going to tell someone about it. Now you have somebody that's no longer skeptical, so you can take a skeptical person to a non-skeptical person and turn them into a brand partner because now they don't have anything to say besides it, it works. Does it make sense? So it's very, 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 very important that out of the 40, 15 of them became customers and eight of them decided to do the business. My first one. Okay, but here's the 
biggest sin. Every one of them did two parties. Every one of them did 10 sit-downs. Every one of them had 25 more, or more pictures. Their first one. And we had 47,000 on. The team did 61 parties in for our first month. Could I do that many? Could I be at that many? No. But I did 16 within those first eight. That turned into 61. So eight, 18 total, I did two myself. Does that make sense? And then we did sit down, and we did we did parties. We got our before and after pictures. And guess what? You know why? Because we created a list of people who were going to try to prog us. Who's your first 25 that are trying to buy it? This week, next week, next week, next week. Okay. Who are we sitting down with? Who's coming to your your, your party? Now here's how you invite. It's it's like if if if, if me and Raylan are racing to New York from Kansas City. She has GPS. I don't. Who gets there first? Why? Yeah, there's, she can take the shortest route. You win. Yeah, I probably still would win. <laughs> yeah. No, she actually tries. She got a left foot. She, I would, I would lose. I have a left foot too, but I don't have a map. Does that make sense? It's, we leave so many of our brand new people with no map. And so they try to do this themselves, and guess what they do? They fail. And that's our fault. It's our job to help people. It's not our job to say, go get a tiger. It's not our job to say, go get a tiger. It is our job to grab someone and help them. If it wasn't for Danny Gassman being on my hip for nine months, I don't know if I'd be here. Danny was at every party, at every sit down. I mean, the guy was on my hip. It was like a roll over and kiss Vanessa, and he roll over and kiss me in the bed. <laughs> times a day. He wasn't calling me 18 I was calling him. I was like, I got a three-way. I got a party. I got a sit-down. You want, don't, here's one of my biggest pet peeves ever, 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 is this, and it happens everywhere though, it's already happened. It's already happened. Is that, I don't call you because you're too busy. People say that to me. All the time. That's your excuse. That is your excuse. That is not true. I'm never too busy to pick up my phone. I'm never too busy to help someone. I have never that guy. And I never will be that guy. If I don't pick up my phone, it's because I'm with somebody. Or I just sit down at a party, I will call you back. Does that make sense? That's just who I am. No, I don't pick up my phone if I'm with somebody because that's rude. Right? But I am serious when I say, look, reach out to your leaders. Put their butt to work. If they're not going to go to work, find somebody else. You guys got my point? Call someone that's ready to go to work. Blow them up. Be that person. Be me. I'm on the phone. Why? Because I had a sit sit down. I had a party. I had a three-way. He had to go to a party. I had to go to a party. Does that make sense? Dan, can I tell you something? I'm always ragging on Danny because he's my best buddy in the world. But if it wasn't for Danny, I would never be here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> when we're together, it's work. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever saw that one magazine, The White. You have the white magazine? You have it in your car. Oh, it's an awesome magazine. So Danny took a picture, uh-huh. right? His shirt's like this. <laughs> you can't put on his shirt. So <laughs> and so he made a huge mistake. Okay? We're in Hawaii. And he told me about this right before we went on, on stage to a regional. And, I, and, and he got up there and he started talking about me being a girl and all this stuff. And I'm like, it's over, dude. I, so I grabbed the magazine. I opened it up to the page. And I go, what? I didn't want to open the magazine that you had one. And what's different about the picture? It probably took him a couple minutes. And then someone started laughing. And someone started laughing. And someone started laughing. 